Good evening and welcome to News Geelong, the voice of television news from our great city. Hope you've been enjoying the heat well this week, as the city of Greater Geelong issued its first heat wave warning for this summer, ahead of the sweltering 40 plus degree temperatures we experienced on Monday. Lani Salathi will update us with the latest in Geelong and surrounding regions weather later in the program. Tonight we feature a continued community awareness from Victoria Police, Geelong, regarding the Geelong Region's road safety programs in 2010 in the ongoing campaign to reduce our region's road toll. We introduce you to the operating world of our G21 Alliance, taking Geelong and surrounding regions into the 21st century. And in the world of sport, with Tim Mitchell, an interview with Geelong Cricket Association President, Mr Grant Jew, regarding the continued and exciting developments in our local cricket competitions. Opening tonight's news, we journey on down to Queenscliff to look at the redeveloped Queenscliff Harbour, a magnificent step forward for the one remaining borough in our local government structure. Meryl Friend reports. Thanks, Graham. And I'm down here at the Queenscliff Harbour. It's brand new. It's all been refurbished, $38 million, with a beautiful observation deck um, to have a look at the 360-degree view. There's a brand new marina and retail shops and restaurants. And we're going to be able to have a chat to uh, Sean Blackwood, who is the general manager of the Queenscliff Harbour. So we're standing up here 34 metres above the ground in this fabulous uh, observation tower that you can see 360 degrees all around the beautiful bay. Yep, that's correct. Um, the observation tower wasn't actually part of the original development. Um, the, the way it came about was Port of Melbourne, uh, during the early stages of our development, um, said that they would like to build a tower on our site and uh, we said, well, we'd like to have a chat about that. And um, within a, a cooperation between um, QHPL, which is our company, and, um, and Port of Melbourne, we, we constructed the tower. Uh, we poured it in four days, it was just one continuous pour and um, yeah so this is now the, the first lighthouse that's been built in Victoria in 90, 94, maybe 96 years, somewhere in around that number. But uh, essentially the, the tower's here to guide larger ships into the harbour, sorry into Port Phillip. So how is this all funded Sean? Okay. Um, the harbour development is, is all private enterprise, so it was funded by a, um, a, a group which is QHPL and QBY. Um, they supplied the majority, all the money to, to build the development. So, and total spend to date, and we are still spending, but yeah, about 38 million. I'm Meryl Friend for News Geelong. Thank you, Meryl. The second season of the successful Geelong Night Markets kicked off last Friday night at Johnson Park. Following the success of the inaugural Geelong Night Market last year, the Queen Victoria Market Proprietor Limited, in conjunction with Central Geelong Marketing, has again launched the innovative Friday nights in the central area of Geelong. Based on other successful night markets around Australia and internationally over the past decade, the Geelong Night Market is being held each Friday during the month of January from 5.30 till 10pm. Many different types of stalls attract local citizens as well as many holiday makers to a family environment of the fun of the fair. Health and Harmony is an area dedicated to mind, body and spirit with massage therapists, reflexology, well I love that one, tarot and aura readers as well as related natural products. There are the eclectic product mix as well with emphasis on the innovative, unusual and sometimes bizarre. The Geelong Night Market also showcases the rich and diverse cultures with multicultural cuisines cooked fresh right in front of your eyes. There's also a fine showing of young designer fashion together with the familiar boasting of many great wines from around Geelong. The Geelong Night Market is a waste-wise event making a continued Geelong effort to reduce the impact on the environment through litter control, reducing waste and recycling. So, if you live in our Geelong region, or you're just holidaying in the area, it's a must to go down to Johnson Park and check it out. Have fun. The Salt Contemporary Art Gallery in Hesse Street, which is the main street of Queenscliff, 
has a special display on until the end of this week. Queenscliff sculptor Rod Dudley has returned home from Milan in Italy to exhibit his unique style of bronze, wood and clay, elegant and elongated totem style work, as Merrill Friend reports. I'm here at the Salt Contemporary Art Gallery in Queenscliff in Hesse Street with the sculptor Rod Dudley and his exhibition is here until the 15th of January. In, in 1965 you, you left Australia and you took off to Milan yes. and you've been living there for a very long time now. Yes, pretty well all the time. Um, I've I virtually w left Australia to s sort of find myself uh, in um, in a figurative way um, because at the time uh, I was a bit shocked with uh, blue poles and paintings like like that and uh, a few of my mates that were seen a bit well, I th as far as I was concerned were going overboard for that kind of art. I, w I wanted to do figurative art because I'd been fallen in love with uh, clay modelling when I was uh, teacher training. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to go to Italy because, for instance, there was a friend of mine at the time, uh, George Baldestein. Uh, he said to me, go to the, to the Brera Academy and you'll find a lot of mates, which I did. Um, I just stayed there for nine months or something, the, not even the academic year. So the exhibition runs until January the 15th in Queenscliff. I'm Meryl Friend for News Geelong. Thank you, Meryl. Interesting, Rod moved to Italy in 1965 because he said his talents weren't appreciated in the Melbourne art scene. Following on from our report last week regarding the unfortunate rock throwing incidents from overpasses on the Geelong Ring Road, we can report that Victoria Roads has reacted positively and promptly with inspections to be carried out along the Geelong Ring Road to look at identifying ways and means to stop the rock attacks. Due to heavy work commitments, Vic Road's South West Regional Director, Mr Robin Miles, was unable to appear on tonight's program, but told News Geelong, the risks associated with objects being thrown from bridges were severe and could have tragic circumstances. Mr Miles went on to say, Vic Roads takes this issue very seriously assessing each incident on a case-by-case -case basis to establish the best possible approach to tackling the problem. Vic Rhodes is currently working closely with the Geelong Traffic Management Unit with a view to identifying and prosecuting those responsible for the alleged offences at this location. News Geelong thanks Mr Miles for his and Vic Rhodes' continued cooperation. And with some good news following last week's rock throwing attacks, a local Geelong business has been a good Samaritan, offering to replace, free of charge, a woman's windscreen after it was damaged in a ring road attack. B&R windscreen specialist has offered to replace the windscreen and the lady involved said, to have this done for nothing is fantastic. We are so grateful. We'll go to a break and be back with more on News Geelong after this.